Hello there, Michael Fudge here. This is another SQL screencast. This screencast will talk about some programming basics in SQL, including how you can make your own variables, set the data in those variables, um, either statically or to the output of other SQL statements, and then use of other program flow constructs such as if, else, and some other interesting uh, intrinsic variables and functions that are available for you to use. Let's start with the basics, such as um, what are the different commands that are available to you to use in terms of SQL programming. So if you want to create a variable, it's the declare statement. So you can say declare um, name as far car 50. And think of this as its own little SQL column that isn't in a table. So because this column isn't in a table, it only holds a scalar. That is, it only holds one piece of data of this type. And then if I want to set a value, I can say set the name equal to Tony, for example. And then lastly, I can use Tony, for example. I could say select name. And then when I execute that, I get back Tony. I can also use this in context with a table. So I could say select name, comma, employee, first name from Fudge Mart employees. And then I get employees first name and just Tony in each row column. So you might be wondering at this point, well, why would you ever want to do something like this? So let me give you a, an example that makes a little more sense. So one thing we know is if I did this, average employee hourly wage. If I do this, I'll get back a scalar that says the average wage of all employees is $15.33 an hour. So I could do something like this to kind of break up um, my query logic into baby steps. I could say declare um, average wage as decimal Let's give it a 18.4 just to be safe. And I can say set average wage equal to that. Then just to show you that we have things working, I can say select average wage. And there you go. I still see 1533. So maybe what you want to see is a list of employees. So let's get it done here. Employee last name, employee first name, employee hourly wage, and then the average wage as average wage. And let me break this up so it's a little easier to read. Okay. Um, from Fudge Mart employees. Execute that. Now I get someone's name, how much they make per hour, what the average is. So you might want to say, well, all right, now I know how much they make, now I know how much the average is. Now I'd like a column here that says, what's the difference between their wage and the average? So now this becomes a little a little more trivial, so I can say something like this. Average wage, hourly wage minus average wage as difference in, let's say just diff in wage. And there you go. So you see that there's some people here that make much more than the average wage, and then there's a bunch of people that make less than the average wage. You could probably write this in one SQL select statement, but you would have to use a, a series of sub-selects to do that, and it would get get noisy rather quickly. For example, every, every place where I have um, at average wage, you would have to 
use this. So the equivalent SQL to make this work without using variables would look quite noisy. It would look like this. Just show you here. Very noisy, very hard to read. Um, doesn't even fit on the screen, <laughs> but that's a different issue. Let me make it fit on the screen here. Okay, there's the same SQL that does the exact same output, and you can see that this is much more noisy than this SQL here because we have this notion of average waste. So that's kind of a rationale for why you'd want to use variables. Uh, you're going to see there's a lot more coming up, but that's just really just the start of it. Okay, now that we're getting a little bit into the programming, let's talk about um, some intrinsic um, statements and functions that you can use to help you figure out what's going on uh, with other SQL statements. Good example of this. I have an insert statement here that will add um, 40 hours for my particular employee ID and today's date. It's going to add a, a timesheet for me. The timesheet table has an int identity set as primary key. So one of the questions you might have is when you run this execute, oops, when I run this execute and it says one row affected, how do I know what the primary key is that it used? You know, what is the identity? So what's kind of neat about this, and I guess I'll just do it right below here, is um, if I select out a special keyword called add add identity, which is called an intrinsic variable, if I select that, it will give me the number that it used when it inserted me into the table. So if I, for example, wanted to take a look at this record, I could say select uh, everything from Fudge Mart. I'm just going to grab it up here because I'm lazy. Uh, where timesheet ID equals the identity. And that will give me the last row I inserted right there. Okay. Also, if I wanted to um, delete this out, uh, now I know the ID that I need to use to delete it out, right? Because I, I've got this added identity. This is pretty useful, like um, when we get into transaction management and you need to, you've got scripts that uh, do multiple inserts and then you need to figure out what the number is so that you can then insert the foreign key. A good example is if we add an employee, we need to know what their ID is before we can add them to the timesheets. So you would do an insert, add the employee, store the employee identity in a variable somewhere, and then insert into the timesheets using that variable. Another useful um, intrinsic variable is the row count variable. And let me give you an example of how this might be used. So I'm going to execute this statement. It's going to return um, thousands of rows here for all the timesheets. Um, let's suppose I just want to find my timesheet, so then I could say where where timesheet employee ID is 33. Execute that. And you see I get rows back. Now I could count these rows with a count star, right? And I get 52 rows. Yay. Um, but Sometimes you might need to do an update. Like, for example, maybe I need to update um, the timesheets and set, set the timesheet hours to, let's say, 38 hours a week. There's a mistake. I didn't work 40 hours a week. I worked 38. And you wanted to do this to only my row. So you say, where employee ID 33. I can execute that. And you'll see it says 52 rows affected. Makes sense. That's the number of rows we returned in the output of the select. The question is, is sometimes when you're writing an SQL script, you might want to know that. You might want to be able to determine how many rows affected. So you can get that information. Let me just comment this out so I don't do it again. It doesn't hurt to do it again, I guess. From a row count. So if I said select row count, it's going to give me the number of rows affected by the previous the previous SQL statement. 
so that I get 52. So you can use this in, in logic to determine, uh, for example, what should or shouldn't happen based on you expecting a number of rows to be affected and they weren't affected. Okay. Okay, as a last step, let me see if I can put this all together for you. Um, you'll get a lot more of these examples in when we do the functions and stored procedures, but let me just kind of get started here. So I'm declaring two variables, employee ID and race, and I'm going to use them as input into a little program that is going to give that particular employee ID an amount of raise um, to their salary. So for example, I'm going to pick my employee ID, 15 cent raise, then I'm going to perform the update, or I'm going to try to, setting the new hourly wage to the existing hourly wage plus the raise amount. Then I'm going to do a little checking. I'm going to say if if that affects one row, then print out the raise occurs for employee name and then look the employee's name up using their employee ID. If this returns zero rows, then I know that this where condition didn't match any rows, which means the employee ID doesn't exist. So then display a message that says the raise did not occur, there's no employee ID. So let's just um, run it a couple of times here. So I'm going to give myself 15 cent raise. The raise occurred for employee named Michael Fudge. So let's poke around here. Let's make, let's see, is there an employee 35? Let's see with employee 35. The raise did not occur with employee ID. Nope, oh, I got to convert the data type. Hold on a second. Let me fix that. I should be casting this. as varkar 12 there okay the raise did not occur no employee with id 35 okay um let me move this down so it's a little more readable i can like let's try it with employee number one is there employee number one yes and we just gave a raise to aerial photo uh is there employee a hundred a uh, thousand a uh, hundred hundred and one Uh, no, there is no employee with 101, so no raise occurred. So hopefully this gives you an idea of why you'd want to implement some complex SQL logic. Uh, in the later screencasts, we'll learn how you can wrap this into a stored procedure so that it makes it easier to rerun this SQL logic whenever you need to. Okay, thank you. See you soon. Happy SQL programming.